It was a slight technology hiccup, but brother, you handled that like a pro. That was good. You just kept going. I think we should do that, have like a wild card presentation each time. One that we just kind of, we mess with them, see how they handle it. You did well. Our next speaker has done it all. Her background is in television news, but she had that entrepreneurial calling and she decided to invent. She has a patent and uh, an invention called the Luminous Envy Tanning Bed, which is sold nationwide and is actually on, as seen on TV. Uh, her ultimate goal is to continue being a motivational speaker and an invention consultant. She currently does PR work exclusively for Mark Cuban companies. And a little known fact, that presentation we had earlier on fear was actually inspired by her driving. And uh, no, it, it really was. I, I experienced it and it, it's frightening. <laughs> but I didn't die. <laughs> Please. Put your hands together for Sherry Garcia. How does everyone know I'm such a bad driver? Hi, I'm Sherry Garcia, founder of Cornbread Hustle, silly name, serious business. We are a staffing agency for second chances. We help convicted felons and former drug addicts get jobs. A little known fact. 86% of the entire prison population is in for nonviolent crimes. That's pretty much drug use. How many of you have got behind the wheel and driven drunk or did any type of drugs? I know, I know the guy with the, the Xanax coffee cup is like totally slouching in his chair right now. So most of the people that I know that are super successful have been in some type of trouble. To me, entrepreneurship is the last refuge of the troublemaking individual. I mean, we can't follow the rules. We become entrepreneurs. Here are a few, um, there's Bill Gates, here are a few um, very successful people who became entrepreneurs after being arrested. So another thing is, one thing that I really have to question is, why within three years of release, 67% return back? What's more, half of those 67% go back within a year. Well, I believe I know the answer because I've worked with inmates and helped them become entrepreneurs for the past four years. Think about if you got locked up for 10 years. How much does technology change in 10 years? What about 20 years? I mean, Facebook just came out about 10 years ago and we didn't even have smartphones. Meet Ben Cardenas. He spent two decades in prison, never used the internet, and didn't know the difference between a debit or a credit card. I had to teach him the difference between data and Wi-Fi. In fact, when they asked for his license, he pulled out his offender card when we were at Kroger. Pretty embarrassing. So usually these guys come out and they're telling them, just get a dishwashing job, just a $10 an hour job, do what you can. But I felt like, you know what, this doesn't give them passion. They need to do something that they really care about. Benny started working on cars, and thankfully I wreck my cars a lot, so he had plenty of work. Uh, <laughs> Jason Hernandez spent 20 years in prison on a life sentence for weed. He got out on clemency by President Obama. The first time he saw heroin was in prison. The first time he saw somebody get murdered was in prison. I don't see how that's a correctional facility, if you ask me. My background, I was a TV reporter. I worked in Sherman, Texas, as well as Fort Worth, Texas. So I did a lot of driving. Um, I also invented the Luminous Envy, he already spoiled all that, and it did sell nationwide, but it didn't make me rich, so I went on to be vice president of a PR firm. But I got stuck with the entrepreneurial bug again and created an app and raised half a million dollars over the summer. Now, <laughs> thank you. Now that all sounds like great victories and a whole bunch of success, but where it really all began wasn't so beautiful. Um, I actually became a drug dealer at the right a ripe age of 17. I was arrested a whopping 11 times. Um, and my mom would always say, by the way, when I was 15, she came to the jail and she said, orange is not your color. And I still haven't worn it to this day. So I know that it's very easy to get in trouble. I got lucky. I, I dealt a lot of drugs and obviously got pulled over a lot, and I just got lucky and didn't have to serve time, so I understand second chances. This picture, I always like to show it because it was my last day at CBS. I actually got fired because of the reply all email button. <laughs> but uh, 
Um, then I tried out for Shark Tank later on. I didn't make it, I was crushed, but I decided to go straight to the source. So a lot of you know that Mark Cuban promotes the Cyberdust app. I contacted him through that app and I was like, hey, let me do your PR. And oh, that's the party we went to whenever he agreed to say yes. Um, he said, oh, Sherry, you should know I don't pay people to do PR. And I said, well, I didn't say I want to be paid. I'll work for free. So for the past three years, I've been working for free for Mark Cuban, but being around all those people and having that inspiration in the high fives is what kept me clean and what's kept me moving towards entrepreneurship. So the reason why I'm standing up here is it's not about you, make a difference. All of us have had struggles, whether it's a miscarriage or you know domestic violence. When you ask somebody what their philanthropy is, you know you can learn a lot about them because whatever they say is probably something that's happened to them. And that's Michael, he's actually here today. I hired him from inside prison. And um, after I did that, I just, I decided, you know what, these are the hardest working guys. They're so loyal. They're not going to try to go find another job because they're so happy they have one. And uh, it made me realize to start the staffing agency. So thank you guys. <laughs>